Alrighty, this is a follow-up video because there was a few points that I wanted to address in the first video, but I didn't have any research. And boy, oh boy, do I have research. Right now, everyone is trying to finesse. Everyone's trying to use assets and make money without the burden, without the hassle, <laughs> without the cost of ownership and I mentioned Airbnb I did some research Airbnb made 4.9 billion dollars in 2019 you know last year was a bad year for everyone everyone got hurt so I went to 2019 but guess how much Red Roof Inn made 6.7 billion guess how much Hilton made 9 billion so collectively, all of the hotel chains did a hundred billion to Airbnb's 4.9 billion. Like 20 times more money. And once again, everyone is trying to finesse because that's the culture we live in, right? That's what's going on right now. People want to make money without the involved cost. If you look at the number of people who are getting into options trading, which is really risky. And essentially people are trying to leverage time, money into more opportunities and money. And once again, like right now, I am an owner in the rental car business, and right now, things are going pretty shitty. Pretty shitty. And it made me think, at one point, YouTube was pretty shitty. At one point, the storage auction business was pretty shitty. At one point, my new furniture, commercial office furniture business was really shitty. And I actually thought about it after I got that car back that was totally trashed. It took me back to the day that I bought one of my worst units before I learned how to buy storage units. And it was a horrible unit. I spent like 300 bucks and it was complete and absolute garbage. It was complete and absolute garbage. And then, how I won in the storage auction business is I became an owner. Here's the thing, you got two choices. You can go ahead and continue to rent seek and try to leverage assets into income or you can become an owner and deal with the BS. There's BS with every business and this is what people are trying to avoid they're trying to avoid the bs they're trying to avoid dealing with the hassles i saw and once again i am listening to the messaging frequently if you watch a youtube ad and there's a guy that's trying to sell you on their tactic they will say the hassles of hiring employees the hassles of building a funnel the hassles of dealing with customers, they're going to say that whatever they're trying to sell you has removed these hassles. And I see it every day on YouTube. I see it all of the time. But at the end of the day, because I was really thinking about um, YouTube, how YouTube makes all of this money and doesn't own the majority of the content. YouTube does own some content, YouTube does have some specially featured content, but for the most part, YouTube makes the majority of its money about content that it doesn't own. And then someone made it in a very astute observation. YouTube owns the servers. YouTube owns the algorithm. YouTube owns all of the data. And that's a really, really key point because that's how Facebook's doing it. 
Facebook owns all of the data. Facebook owns a ton of data. Facebook owns the servers. And once again, even though Facebook, YouTube, Airbnb, Uber, and Lyft, they are doing a combination of ownership and manipulation and finessing. And let me explain. Airbnb owns the relationships. Yes, they are the middleman because if you were to go ahead and try to rent out your home on Craigslist, you could probably do it, but you would be really, really pressed to manage it and have people booking it and collect payments and stuff. So Airbnb does that really, really well. So Airbnb has ingratiated themselves to the Airbnb host, where the Airbnb host, once again, if they had to go out, put their own website up, do their own payments, the hassle factor would be huge. But Airbnb makes it monkey simple. Monkey simple. All you have to do is um, just list your property on Airbnb and they handle everything else. They collect payment, they do the marketing, they put it in their, on their platform and you make money. Uber, if you had to actually go out and solicit rides, you got a car, you got a cash app. You know how hard that would be? So Lyft, Uber, Airbnb, Facebook, they own the servers, the data, but more importantly, they own the relationship. So even though these guys are finessing, they're, they're doing the hybrid because even though they are finessing, they have ownership where it counts. They own the relationships. Airbnb owns Amazon, Amazon FBA. Amazon owns the customer. Whenever you say you got something from Amazon, you say, I got it on Amazon. You don't say I got it from seller Squiggy2786. You say, I got it off Amazon. You don't even know who the seller was. You went on Amazon, you, you found the item in the buy box, and you purchased it. That's all you know. Because Amazon owns you as a customer. They own the relationship, they own the customer, and essentially Uber does the same thing. Lyft does the same thing. So even though they're finessing on a massive level, they own, they have full ownership of where it counts. Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, they own proprietary patents to their algorithm. No one else can get access to this, these features because YouTube, Facebook, they actually own all this stuff. And it kind of goes back to my original thesis. Ownership is critical for control. Like right now, YouTube. Like right now, I'm renting property on YouTube. Even though this is my content, YouTube owns you. YouTube owns the relationship. YouTube owns the algorithm. YouTube owns all of this. And one of the things that I see is the future. And I want you guys to kind of hang out with me for a minute. In the future, someone's going to come, come it's getting hot. Someone's going to create an algorithm, right? They're going to create a feature and you're going to have one person who's going to run this company and they're going to use all of these data sets 
algorithms, whatever, and they're going to create a one person billion dollar company. That's coming. And because they're going to be able to leverage their massive audience, they're going to make billions. They're going to make billions. And one of the things that I'm looking at, and I'm going to tell you another thing, even though I am an owner, I am being finessed to a degree by hire car. Why am I being finessed? Hire car owns the renters. I could not do what I'm doing without hire car. Not yet. As uh, we go forward, I'm going to create my own platform, my own website, become a true owner and use all of these people that I'm getting from hire car and take them over to my website. But that's like a year or two away. But I'm peeping the game because here, here's how hire car is finessing. Hire car will allow me to put my cars on their platform, right? And let's say I wanted to charge $39 a day for my car. And hire car is going to charge me to utilize their insurance. And I have a 70% plan, an 80% plan, and an 85% plan. But here's where the finessing comes in. Regardless of what plan I choose, hire car tax on additional fees for insurance to the renter that I, I didn't even know about until one renter showed me because I am charging $39 a day for car, right? But once hire car tax on their stuff, it becomes like $52 a day for the car. Even though I'm only getting a percentage, I'm getting 85 percentage, 85 percent of that $39. So hire car, since hire car, hire car owns the renters, owns the relationship, they have the portal. They've become, at this point, an indispensable part of my business. Just like people who do Amazon FBA. They could not do Amazon FBA without Amazon. They couldn't do it. And just like uh, one of the things I have learned, because YouTube is finessing me, but YouTube owns the servers. Like, let me give you an example. When, you, when I started YouTube 12 years ago, it was incredibly difficult to load up a video. So YouTube increased the servers, they've increased the bandwidth. Uh, if you go back to my older videos, you will now see that there's no longer black bars on the side of those videos. It used to be, because I was shooting in standard definition versus HD, that's why I had those black bars. I was completely oblivious to it because I didn't know anything about video. And um, they went ahead and fixed all that. YouTube has made it so drop dead simple for you to shoot and upload a video that, you know, when people talk about YouTube is going to have competition, I start laughing. Because anyone that wants to compete with YouTube in the YouTube video space, they will have to have a budget of $10 billion just to start. Just to start. And they will have to spend $9 billion of that marketing, letting people know we exist. And then they will have to copy a lot of what Facebook has done. I mean, YouTube has done. So even though YouTube... Facebook, Lyft, Uber, and Airbnb are finessing us, they have ownership where it is critical. Facebook owns all of his patents. Facebook owns all of his proprietary data. It owns its relationships with us, the users, and it sells that relationship through users on both sides. It has the users who consume Facebook and it has users who create content. And they are the middleman and imagine if you try to start a Facebook group without Facebook. And there there's groups online, there's listservs, there's all this other stuff, but there 
You got to get the website. You got to let people know. You got to do a lot of heavy lifting. So the finessing is going to go on. And I am actually going to finesse higher car back a little bit. Uh, once I go ahead, because essentially I've been doing this nine weeks. So after a year, I'm going to have a repository of people who rented cars from me. And all the bad ones, I'm never going to send them an email. But all the good ones, I will, let's see. Go on, if things go the way that I want them to, and let's say next August, because this is when my year will start. It's not going to start in July. And I have 100 cars. I would have 200 people to advertise who I know need a car for my buy here, pay here business. And I will also have these people vetted because like I said, all of the yard birds, like the person who trashed it, she, I'm not contacting that bitch. She, it'd be a cold day in hell before I do anything nice for her. Um, but I'm going to finesse the finessers. And part of this is learning the game, learning the game because you know, uh, that was that video there. A lot of y'all had a lot of really good points. And, you know, I love videos where I get those type of intelligent, well thought out responses. I love that versus all of the moist men, the haters. Glendon, you always brag and how much money Graham Steffens does a video talking about he's a millionaire and not one of you clowns go to his video site. Graham, stop bragging. You want to know why? Because Graham is white, and you feel that being rich is some white folk stuff. That is where you're mentally weak. I see it in your comments. You're mentally weak. You feel that having money, being able to, you know, save up large sums of money and invest in businesses and stuff, that's white folk stuff. But you see me doing it and talking about it because essentially, as someone, because, you know, for the folks who, love me and appreciate me i thank you people and i see some of you like he ain't bragging he's just talking about his life i've seen that over and over again and you know y'all are starting to confront the moist moist nation because essentially a lot of these dudes are broke they have no dreams they have no goals and they see me and also i saw some stuff in there that was like it was my fault that the renter trashed my vehicle. How is that my fault? You were greedy. So starting a business, trying to serve people and make money, that makes me greedy. Limited mindset. You know, I don't get into it like Erica be on y'all. Erica be on y'all because she's like, I ain't like y'all. I'm totally different. Hate me, you know. And one of the things that's um, starting to emerge is who the real bosses are because like i said i'm going through the gauntlet and i was telling someone last night i'm going through the gauntlet and what the gauntlet is is when it's really shitty it's really really shitty right now i've got an 800 dollars repair i got another repair waiting on the uh, to get a the, to get a cable and i am um it's real shitty right now. It's just, it just is. And I've seen some of you blame me for buying cars. I saw this one clown and I just deleted it because it's like, you could have, you could have built business credit. You, you went too fast. You run. I got started. Unlike you, because when you, when you're saying these things, it's like you, you rush, you got started. I have a sense of urgency. No doubt about that. I have a sense of urgency. I have an agenda. I have a plan. I have a, and I'm executing it right before your eyes. And for those of you who are mentally weak, who are moist, you can't stand it because all you can do is daydream and live vicariously through these YouTubers. This is why these videos, it's like, you can start this business and make $30,000. This is why y'all watch those videos because you don't have to do anything. 
you can just listen and absorb and like, hey, that's good sauce, man. That's good sauce. That's good sauce, man. And you ain't getting off your monkey ass and doing a damn thing. And then you see someone like me who talks mad shit. I talk a lot of shit, but I'm like Carl Malone used to be. You know why they just call him the mailman? Because he delivered on Sundays. And I'm delivering. And you're going to watch me go from shitty. And once again, I, no doubts. I am not going to sugarcoat it. It's shitty right now. And then a few months is going to, you know, after. Because see, this is one of the things that I'm learning. And with ownership. Ownership teaches you how to run a business. Because you're responsible. So tomorrow I'm getting rid of the X5 and I'm going to get two cars for that X5 and I'm going to change the fleet up a little bit and I'm going to do things a little differently and I'm going to put up cars because I already know the problem cars. One of the things that I didn't understand because I'm not part of that bottom of the barrel class. I deal with rich folks all the time. I, I live in a wealthy neighborhood. Everyone around me has money. You know, people buy Porsches, Bentleys, um, Maseratis, Lambos. And you know, I got a neighbor, he just bought a Lambo. And I was like, I went over and talked to him. I said, nice car. Not like, not none of this hate, like, oh, you got a Lambo. You must think you special. You must think you special. You got a Lambo. I'm like, congratulations. This is a nice color. It's a, it's a beautiful red color. And he's like, you know, it was his lifelong dream and he finally pulled the trigger and he paid cash. He did not finance his Lambo. He paid cash. He paid cash. Interesting how people with the money to do these things actually do these things. So one of the things I want you guys to understand is we're about to go through a global reset. And you got a choice. You can be one of the finessers. And if you hit right, the finessing can work. If you hit right. Or you can be a boss and an owner. Facebook is an owner and a finesser. Uber is an owner and a finesser. So the best thing to do is to be an owner who finesses. That's the sweet spot. Because I, I really thought about it because when I did that research and saw that Hilton, the Intercontinental, when all of these big hotel chains collectively, they made a hundred billion dollars. And Airbnb made four, almost five. And all of these hotel chains are owners. They're making, they're taking these rental money from us who stay in their hotels and they're buying these properties and then they're flipping them. And they're flipping them. So they're making money not once, not twice, but three times. They make money when you rent, they make money when it appreciates, and they make money when they flip. Whereas when you're a finesse like Airbnb, Airbnb makes money one time. When you rent that property through their host, that's where they make their money. But if you're an owner, you can make money three or four times. I'm an owner. I'm going to make money off these cars, renting them for two years. And I'm going to make money again when I flip them. So I'm going to make money two times off of the same car. That's what you can do. You lease a car. You can use that car to make money, but you only make money once. And the key to getting rich is to make money two, three, four, and five times off of the same transaction. That's the key to getting rich. And that's why the true bosses are owners and finessers. <laughs> they also are finessers. So I got some new training coming up, middle of the month. Give me some time to shape it up. We're gonna get into um, business boot camp, and we're going to get into um, a lot more. And for all of you moist men, stop watching. Just stop watching. Because if me stating I bought a Porsche. I pay myself X amount of dollars per month. I live in the me. If that's bragging, me staying how I live, you're so mentally weak 
that you're not ready for the information on this channel because you can't activate it because you're so mentally weak. you mentally a child. When? So, stop watching. This content's for adults, not children. Not wannabes, not punks, not moist men. It's for adults, for people who want to do something with their lives. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.